Hey guys, so I wanted to come on here and compare the Galaxy S8 with the new Sony Xperia XA1 Ultra. Uh, two very nice uh, bezel-less phones here, uh, except for the top and bottom obviously with the XA1 Ultra. Uh, but how do they compare day to day with construction at the same time and have a look? So the XA1 Ultra comes in at about half the price of the uh, S8 but it does have more mid-range spec here in general uh, you can see the S8 has a similar form factor uh, but the size of the screen is actually about the same here uh, so if you could just shave this top off they could really uh, do something amazing for the XZ1 And we have started the mode up here. Uh, so you can see the S8 does start up a little bit faster overall. Uh, we're going to do a speed comparison between the two and then uh, basically have a look how they do compare in terms of the software, etc. So you can see here, I think the S8 is proving to be a little bit snappier. Uh, in terms of the third party apps here I didn't do that one at the same time I know but we had a weird pop up on the XA1 Ultra uh, but I don't think it's doing too bad actually given the MediaTek processor but what I find is that the they do tend to slow down when you open up a lot of apps whereas you should see some consistent performance here on the right I did say that the camera was more mid-range on the XA1 Ultra, but I think someone pointed out it's actually the same as what you're getting in the Z5 series, so yeah, you know, it's not going to be too bad, I don't think. Uh, but I think you can see here the Samsung is the faster phone overall, you get what you pay for. Uh, i got to say, you know, the display experience on both of them is quite comparable though, you know, in terms of uh, being very nice for multimedia content. Apparently the front facing camera as well on here is optically image stabilised which is really weird how they can't put that on the back. They can put it on the front but they can't put it on the back. But then again I guess Sony has its own steady shot system so that doesn't really need optical image stabilisation. still among the best in terms of that. So overall, I think I'm going to give this to the S8 in terms of the uh, performance here. It just seems to be a little bit snappier. And we can just have a look at the speed of the Wi-Fi. So we'll just start with the, the XA1 Ultra. which gets a very media tech score here overall that is on the 5G band as well so you know go figure please don't make this too embarrassing S8 oh it's going to it's going to go up it's going to go up maybe not uh, so quite uh, average scores today you know maybe uh, it is not so bad after all on the XA1 Ultra Give it another go, just to be fair. And you see it's doing better this time, so it's uh, obviously a bit variable here. Uh, but I think the S8 is giving slightly better performance, which is good. And we can, oh, they have done some changes to Bigsby, I think to make it like more tempting to actually try out. Still not motivated though. Uh, we can just have a look at the browsing. And we can see Tech Radar for the win. And uh, go. Go. So you can see here 
Uh, let's just uh, want to brighten this up a little bit. It's a bit dark in this room. Let's bump it up. There we go. And let's see here. So it looks like the XA1 Ultra isn't too bad when it comes to your mobile websites. Let's try a bigger website here. Go. And go. So you can see the S8 has the raw speed. Uh, but both of them look fantastic in terms of the viewing here. Content absolutely marvellous. I actually think I prefer the like Sony way of doing the bezel-less display here because it does prevent ghost touches. I notice with the curved display you are susceptible to that a lot more. Uh, so props to LG and Sony for this kind of non-curved option. Uh, I think the S8 is slightly faster still. Uh, we're going to have a look at the multitasking and round the video off quite nicely. So I don't think the Sony is going to be able to keep up here, but maybe it can. 3 gigs of RAM, and there seems to be a lot of lag in the actual like uh, multitasking here. You can see this is MediaTek, this is classic MediaTek. You see that judder? I mean we're looking at like 20 frames per second there. So absolutely awful like uh, lag when it comes to the, the scrolling here. Maybe it's a bug, you know, maybe they'll fix it with a software update, but that would uh, not be very nice to use day to day. Uh, the actual holding in memory seems to be about comparable, not hugely different here, which is good. Let's just try Angry Grand Run. Actually seems to be doing better than the Samsung when it comes to your gaming. Wow, that's amazing. Look at that. So I think I'm going to give this to the Sony here when it comes to the holding in memory aspect. But you need to get rid of that lag because it's like, it's just horrible to the eyes. Uh, but nevertheless, I'm giving it to Sony. You can see it's held all the games pretty much in memory, which is fantastic performance. Uh, so yeah, very interesting results here. You can see generally uh, the apps open going to Samsung, as well as the Wi-Fi, uh, but the multitasking is still going to Sony here. I think Sony's definitely doing better when it comes to the memory management. Uh, if you can just shave off the top and bottom like bezel here as well uh, and keep it without the curve for the next one, that would be great. And I think very competitive with the Note 8. Uh, hopefully they will do that. Uh, so yeah, just a quick comparison here between uh, XA1 Ultra and the Galaxy S8. If you've got any questions, do let me know. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.